It's the beginning of June, the beginning of summer effectively for us academics, and it's time for me to do another update video. So what I'm going to do is talk about all the things that took place in May and what we've got coming up in June. Before we do that, I, I like to do some highlights. So the three big things coming up for this month is in the beginning of the month, actually just days from now, I'm going to be traveling up to the Institute for St. Anselm Studies at St. Anselm College, where I will be doing a summer research residency, uh, splitting my time in part between doing some work for the Institute and some of my own research and some filming. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, capping it off with a very fun conference that I like to go to every year when I can. Um, Another big thing that happened was in May we passed the 2,000 subscribers mark and I created a video specifically about that thanking my viewers and subscribers. Once again, thanks. Um, and it got a lot of interesting uh, traction and discussion. I think I'm going to do some, some further, not necessarily video, but, but some writing about that in, in the future. Um, I'm also going to be in some respects scaling back to, to some degree on the um, video production and blogging. The blogging, I haven't done that much, so it's not that big of a scale back. I'm going to be releasing about four videos per week uh, as opposed to the, the typical five to six, uh, in part because I, I need to spend more time on research and writing, in part because I'm going to be taking some well-deserved family time break. Uh, but I will be doing about four videos per week, and I'll talk about those when we get to the June part. So, uh, month of May was, uh, like every month, very busy. Um, I did two talks, one of which was online. Um, so let me talk about that one first. I, I have a, a colleague down in South Carolina who teaches high school history, AP history, uh, and who also does a lot of um, prep videos for that, some really... Uh, high production stuff, uh, very entertaining, but also a lot of information there, and that's Tom Ritchie. And he asked me to come on and do a Q&A session for his viewers about um, modern European philosophy. So that covers a lot of area. Um, it went very well. I, I enjoyed it. Tom enjoyed it. I think the viewers enjoyed it quite a bit. You can see the video over in his channel if you happen to miss it. And I think we'll probably doing more. We'll probably be doing more collaborations like that in the future. I'm hoping that we'll do some stuff specifically on on Hegel. I also did a talk in the library series that's been ongoing. The fifth one uh, for May was on the Stoics. So you know, early Stoics, but primarily the later Stoics like Seneca. Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius, and their views on anger. They were one of the main rivals to the Aristotelian school when it came to that emotion, and their viewpoint on it ended up um, not only you know bearing fruit for Stoics, but also for eclectic philosophers like, like Cicero, and it even ended up uh, influencing quite a bit of Christian thought on anger later on, as we're going to see as we move through the series. So, Videos for those are, are available. Um, my teaching has been, um, on, on the one hand, coming to a close for the Marist class, which you know I'm pretty thankful about, the Worldviews and Values class. Finished up, although I, I do have some students who took incompletes that I still have to follow up with. Um, a lot of medical incompletes this time around, uh, even to the level that, that the dean raised some questions about it. Um, but I, I also finished up just, uh, well, it's not completely finished up, but it's close to finished up the GCAS Philosophical Foundations class. Uh, that went very well. Um, we covered a number of different areas of philosophy. We had our last video conferencing session. We do two hours a week of, of video conferencing uh, with me providing a presentation, a lot of discussion. <clears throat> That's the way the GCAS classes work. A um, lot of work for me on, on both of those classes, um, you know, producing videos, producing content, handouts, engaging with the students in discussion forums, a lot of grading for me as well, but uh, very productive experiences, I think, for, for my students. Um, <clears throat> I also engaged in, in a bit of consulting and uh, quite a bit of philosophical counseling, a little bit of tutoring this, this last month. 
Um, those are some, some of the areas that, that I, I work in. Almost entirely, except for the consulting part, almost entirely uh, through the, the medium of the internet, you know, using Skype. So that's, that's good. Um, I also did get the Reason I.O. website uh, built out a little bit more with the philosophical counseling part so people who are interested in that sort of thing can go to the website and see what it entails. Uh, and if, if they think that it's something that they're interested in, in pursuing with me, they, they can contact me. Um, I got some work done on writing projects, not as much as I would like, but I never get as much done as I would like. Um, some additional writing on St. Anselm, getting ready for moving up to the, uh, the Institute. Um, some work on Gabriel Marcel and the Christian philosophy debates for a long promised article for the Gabriel Marcel Society's new journal. Uh, I didn't finish it, which I'm, you know, a little bit unhappy about, but, but it's, it's, I've made some progress on it, so that's good. And I, I started laying the groundwork for my conference paper on Thomas Aquinas and anger that I'll talk about in the June part. Now, videos. Um, the Half Hour Hegel Project passed another milestone, as I talked about in one of my previous update videos, and I'm now committed to shooting six videos per month, which is quite a bit, because each one of those half hour videos takes about five to six hours of, of time, you know, between writing out the slides, um, recording the material, doing all the editing involved. There's, there's quite a bit behind it, not, not to mention actually rereading the Hegel and thinking about how am I actually going to teach this. Um, but I'm, I'm very happy to, you know, that there's enough support for me to, to keep doing that. Um, I've got a, a pretty devoted, um, you know, viewership, you could say. Um, and for the Half Hour Hegel patron, patrons, I've been able to provide some special perks uh, available to them. Uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing and in supporting it, you can, you can see the link in the video description. Um, so I did, I did six Half Hour Hegel videos this month. We finished up the section Perception, and we launched into one of the sections that's viewed as a particularly difficult one by Hegel scholars, Force and the Understanding. We are, you know, a good ways into it. I don't think we're at quite the halfway mark, um, but we're making some good progress with that. I think we'll probably finish up with it in uh, late June, early July. Um, I released the last of the Worldviews and Values videos, the videos that I created for my Marist Worldviews and Values class, and which I'll be using as well for an Aplerno class. Uh, that'll be an expanded version that I'll be teaching on that down the line. Um, those were all on marks, and they had suspicious, uh, not suspiciously, um, surprisingly, well, it was a little bit suspicious given that I thought I would have a lot of negative reactions. <laughs> um, but surprisingly uh, good comments on them. People really enjoyed them. There, I guess there is kind of a lack of decent work on Marx in YouTube, and people have been asking me if I would shoot some more Marx-related stuff, and, and the answer is yes, but, but not right now, um, perhaps down the line. I also was able to get some, some critical thinking fallacy videos done, and to make some progress, you know, we're not anywhere near finished with that series. Um, I would like to get that series finished so I can move on to other topics in critical thinking in that channel. But it's, you know, that takes quite a bit of work as well because I have to create the slides for those. Um, that, that's pretty time consuming and then I have to shoot and edit quite a bit for those videos. But they're getting quite a bit of um, uh, use and, and traction and good comments, so that's good. I managed to finally put together the video for the talk on humility that I did back in April um, is humility a vice or a virtue, and I, I released that. And the Stoicism on Anger talk, you can also see the video for that, as well as all of the other previous videos in the Understanding Anger series. So that's uh, May, quite a bit that, that went on during, during that month. What have we got uh, going on in, in June? Well, let me talk first about the research residency that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going up to New Hampshire to St. Anselm College, a place that I've been connected with in one way or another for about 15 years. I went to the very first St. Anselm conference 
uh, back in 2000 where I, I presented a paper as a graduate student and got to meet some people who would end up being very instrumental in my own development as a scholar. Um, I, I talk about that in, in one of my other videos that I'll link to here about becoming a St. Anselm scholar. Um, and I, I continued going to those conferences when I, when I could. Um, sometimes, you know, it wasn't feasible to do so, but in, in most cases I did. Um, I was asked to give the St. Anselm lecture, which is a great honor in 2008. Uh, and I, you know, I read my paper there. I guess I'll probably link to that as well if you're interested in, in that sort of thing. And I've continued my relationship with them since then. I, I did another research residency a number of years back, um, and what that allowed me to do was to, to go and use the, the special collection um, to, you know, spend some time just focused on that, also to spend some time with the monks, because St. Anselm's College is actually also a Benedictine monastery. So I was able to, you know, do the Liturgy of the Hours with them and, and uh, talk with, with some of the monks about, about different things. Not too much about St. Anselm, but more about Benedictine life. And it was a really great time, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I will be doing some work for the Institute. They actually have a research project for me that they want me to help out with, in part because, you know, they need somebody who actually knows the field and knows the literature and is willing to do the, the groundwork in, in cataloging um, dissertations and finding information about that. And I'm happy to do it because I, I'm, you know, uh, a big supporter of the Institute and its mission, and I, I love seeing people doing research on, on St. Anselm because I think he's a, a really great thinker. I will also be doing some work on my own. A good portion of it is getting my conference paper ready for a conference later this summer in Boston, reading Anselm, where I'll be presenting a paper specifically on St. Anselm's prayers and meditations and the workings of justice and mercy in those. I'm actually, I've been working on that project for quite some time. I published a a piece back um, years ago on, on mercy and justice in the Proslogion. I presented on mercy and justice in the Cur Deus Homo this last fall uh, at a satellite session of the American Catholic Philosophical Association, and I'm going to be presenting this, this other thing, so it's sort of a triptych of works that I'm eventually going to develop into a short book on the issue of the compatibility or the, the, the you know, co the interpenetration of divine justice and mercy in St. Anselm's thought, with a bit of comparative work to previous thinkers and looking ahead to um, later thinkers. So the, the residency up there will last, uh, it's pretty short, it'll last about a week or so, you know, given the travel time, but then after the residency is over, I'll also be staying up there for the annual St. Anselm Metaphysics Colloquium. Um, this is a fairly small, you could call it a conference, but it's really more of a workshop in which um, a lot of great scholars from the local area uh, come, you know, some, some pretty big names, in fact. Uh, I had the, the good fortune of meeting um, somebody who I, I had corresponded with years ago, Oliver Blanchette, a major uh, Maurice Blondel scholar, the guy I wrote my dissertation on, Maurice Blondel. Uh, last time that I was there. And um, it's always, you know, some really stimulating, intense discussion of, of issues in metaphysics, which spill over into ethics, philosophy of human nature, social philosophy, epistemology, and it's a great time. They always uh, do a great job in hosting it, and, you know, a lot of the same people keep going year after year, so it's a, it's a way for me to catch up with old friends and colleagues as well. So that's the Institute stuff. Now, I'm, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than I've, I've done with other sorts of um, things like that. You, you remember that last year I was a, a visiting scholar at the European Graduate School, but I didn't really shoot any video about that. This time I decided that what I ought to do is um, I'm going to do some video blogging about the, the trip up there, what I'm doing, um, you know, the kind of research that goes on to give you a little glimpse into the, you know, this sort of 
portion of the life of, of the mind, you can see, to a certain extent, what, what um, academic scholars actually do and, and the conditions in which they, they work and the kinds of things they, they get excited about. So I've decided I'm going to shoot, you know, two, maybe two, maybe four, any, somewhere in between videos, not every single day, but, but you know, uh, at least some of the days while I'm up there, I'll, I'll uh, do some talking to my, my YouTube audience about the research and how it's going and, and what's involved and any other interesting stuff that comes up. I'm also going to hopefully do some interviews with some of the main people who are involved with the St. Anselm, the Institute for St. Anselm Studies, uh, because I think that that could be interesting for you viewers as, as well. So there's going to be some different video work going on. Um, and if that takes off, maybe I'll do more stuff like that in the future. We'll, we'll see. I also have um, a couple talks coming up. One is a public talk at the, the Kingston Library on June 13th. I'll be back in Kingston by that time, and it will be on the Epicurean philosophers and their philosophical tradition and their orientation towards anger, part of the Understanding Anger series. So if you're in the area uh, and you want something stimulating on a Saturday morning, stop by. And if you do, introduce yourself. Let me know, you know, who, who you are. Um, there's also a conference that I'll be attending where I'll be presenting a paper. I'm not sure whether I will be able to video record it or not. It's out in Long Island. Um, I will be presenting on the 26th, which is a Friday. Uh, it's the Aquinas Leadership Institute. So it's, um, it's mostly focused on issues of leadership, organizational behavior, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a conference applying philosophy to the, these issues. So it fits in very well with the sort of consulting work that I do. And I will be talking about Thomas Aquinas' views on anger. Uh, it's it's uh, his construal of anger as being concerned with what we call the difficult good and how it fits in with issues of leadership and organization. So that'll be a lot of fun. I hope I get some great feedback on that. Um, I'm also doing some more work on, on writing and research. I already mentioned the Anselm-related stuff. Um, there's the Aquinas paper that I need to actually get in shape, ready to present. And um, I need to get that Marcel paper finally ha you know, hammered out and sent off as, as long ago promised. Um, you know, I haven't done a lot of work on uh, the Christian philosophy debates as of uh, late, but it's something that I used to do a lot of uh, work on, and so I'm looking forward to you know spending more time going back over those 1930s debates and talking about Marcel's own role in that and how it, it fits in with his later philosophy. Um, as far as video work goes, you've got quite a, a few things coming up. Like I said, I'm going to be pairing back um, video work to about four videos per week, which is still quite a bit. Um, a lot of channels only put out one video per week. I've got two, actually three channels. I haven't released the third channel yet, but um, there's uh, you know quite a bit coming out. I'll, I'll, I have six half-hour Hegel videos that I'm on the hook for um, for this month, so I, I, I need to get cracking on that. And they're in, like I pointed out, one of the most difficult portions of the phenomenology force in the understanding, so they take a little bit more time uh, than, than normal because I've spent so much time like rereading and rereading and saying, what, what exactly is going on here? Um, but it's, it's good work to do. Uh, there will be more critical thinking fallacy videos coming out this month. Um, I'm going to be doing some, some video blogging, like I said on Anselm, the interview, uh, the, the Epicurean and, Epicureans and Anger um, session for the Understanding Anger series will be available. And I'm also going to be doing some core concept videos. I've got a ethics class that is starting for Marist. Actually, today, uh, I, I opened the class this last weekend, but... Um, you know, these core concept videos, I use them pretty extensively in my, my classes. And I've been teaching this online ethics class and tweaking it for the last four years for Marist College. And, I, you know, each time around I try to add some new material, some, some new videos when possible. And one of the areas where I don't have an awful lot right now, 
as far as the core concept videos go, is Epicurus and the Hedonist tradition. So I'm hoping to shoot some videos on that. Uh, I got to do it before my class actually gets that far in the semester. So, you know, you can look for those coming out later this month as well. Um, so those are the, the things coming up in this month. Uh, that's what happened last month. Um, quite a bit going on as, as usual. I probably won't be doing as much blogging, but I'll be spending a lot more time on academic writing this month and, uh, you know, a lot more intensive research time. Um, I hope all of you have a, a good month, and that's pretty much all there is to say at this point.